Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the commodity space, the dollar had a very impressive bull break. This is the highest price that the dollar has been since a long time. May 2017, so we're looking at over two-year highs on the dollar. And if you did not tell me that gold broke its two-year equilibrium bullish and you showed me this chart of the dollar, I would say gold probably broke bearish. So that's a, definitely a positive for the gold bulls and the minor bulls. The fact that they're holding on so well while the dollar is still strong, it almost opens up the opportunity where if this trend does change, and again, for the dollar, there's no indication of that. But if we were to see the monthly uptrend lost on the dollar sometime in the next six months, that could be potentially fuel for another leg higher in precious metals. So it's something to be aware of. And now we're looking back up at 103.82 as the most clear and important resistance because that's the highest price that we've seen essentially in 17 years. That's a long time. I don't think we're going to get up there anytime in the near term. As far as the daily uptrend goes, anything above 97.17 is a higher low. This was just a straight up V-shaped recovery and breaking of all resistance levels. 98.93, you could consider that a little bit of a double top. We did break it by a solid almost 1%, actually about 1%. So it's definitely a bull break in my opinion. But looking at the four hour time frame, that's the most important indication of when daily consolidation is coming is when the four hour uptrend has been lost. So looking at gold, gold is seeing healthy daily consolidation at this point. I'm watching the 12 period exponential support. And you can see since this breakout started back in May and June, we've pretty much been guided by this 12 period exponential. We have closed below it a couple times, but every time we close below it, it's followed by a big green candle just to get right back above it. And the most recent consolidation has been grinding right off of that. So here we are testing that again. As far as price levels are concerned, anything above 1492 and 1493, that's a bit of a double bottom. And anything above that keeps the daily uptrend intact. It's worth watching bear miners, in my opinion, because we know precious metals are going to see weekly consolidation sometime soon. There's a big bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly chart right now. What's more important to me than the weekly shape of the candle is the daily uptrend because I know this candlestick is not going to be confirmed unless we lose the daily uptrend. So again, for the precious metal bulls, it'll just be looking for a healthy weekly higher low to form, but that's also a potential week or two bounce for the bear miners to take advantage of in the short term. So looking at gold again, anticipating that we'll likely hold 1492, at least on the first attempt, and if we were going to see a bear break, in my opinion, it would probably be from the inability to see continuation over 1555 and then losing the higher low pattern. So almost a head and shoulders here where we see higher lows and higher highs, lower high, lower low. If we're going to lose the uptrend, that's how I would imagine it would happen. And that would set up the possibility. Well, we'll take it one day at a time. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we'll see where we open. And it's worth keeping an eye on the bull miners early this coming week for that daily higher low to form in gold. And the gold bulls need to change the four-hour trend back in their favor for that daily higher low to be set. I was very impressed with bull miners. I started yesterday's live stream and said, keep an eye on the bull miners today, especially if we break 1533 on gold because of the lack of resistance immediately after it. And we're looking for a daily higher low. We double topped at that resistance and then bear broke to lower lows. So again, same thing. If you just show me this gold chart, I would say miners were red today. The S&P 500 was red and gold was red. Miners had a good day. So that was a bit surprising to me. And again, the bulls are loving that fact. So let's go to silver first, then we'll go to the miners. So silver on the daily time frame, just an inside bar, have hardly even started consolidating, which is again, keeping gold weaker than silver. We pull up that chart and we're down at the low of the XAU, XAG pairing which means silver is the strongest it's been comparative to gold on this entire rally. So we're watching for this to shift in the short term. Just if we look at historical RSI levels, the last time this happened, 
that RSI got down to about 23, 24. And I look back and say, okay, silver has not been this strong comparative to gold in a very long time. We're looking back in 2014. So I can say that if the historical bounce levels have been in the low 20s and the daily RSI is currently 22, we know a bounce is soon coming sooner rather than later where the gold bulls will likely play catch up. Again, whether that means gold goes up faster than silver or whether gold just goes down slower than silver, that remains to be seen, but it's something to be keeping an eye on this coming week. So silver, very strong. The four hour time frame is an equilibrium. So let's just draw this equilibrium real quick where we have the high, low, lower high, and higher low all formed. So probably Sunday night, Monday morning, this break is going to occur. And that can give us clues for gold as well. Gold's four hour pattern is not nearly this clear. And if silver breaks this pattern bearish, that's going to give us information as to which direction to be looking for miners this coming week. If it breaks bullish, that'll probably mean that gold is forming its daily higher low and that the bull miners are forming their higher low as well. So for NUGT, anything above 3520 is a daily higher low. We have to change the hourly trend to be confident our daily higher low has been established. You can make the argument that by holding 3869 and breaking 4014, we did change the daily trend, but we have a tightening hourly pattern into the end of the day from Friday, and this would need to break bullish to be very convincing that the daily higher low has been established. So again, what happens Sunday night into Monday morning is going to determine what I'm looking at as I sit down Monday morning and establish the game plan for the day. As far as which direction on the miners I'm going to be looking, it's going to be dependent on what the precious metals four hour time frame looks like, most notably silver's equilibrium, and also what the hourly time frame looks like on NUGT in pre-market whether we still have 39.53 support, whether we've broken short-term resistance of 41. Those are two things that I'm going to be watching for that's going to determine what I'm looking for on a daily basis. And I like to, as a day trader, I treat it as a daily basis. Am I looking at gold bull today or gold bear today? And that helps stay nice and focused as opposed to looking bigger picture just for me personally. So the bear miners did get a nice little bounce this week. We ended up going from 578 up to 663. So some pretty solid short-term gains. Again, short-term being the key word because we don't want to be fighting. It's a nice 14% move, but we don't want to be fighting the trend that gold clearly has as far as being still in full control of the bulls. So we can be day trading bear miners in my opinion, but not something we want to be swing trading that much at this point. That will change, but not right now. So we're looking down at support of 578 and we're not really close to changing the daily trend or anything like that. So I'm going to be looking at it again on a day-by-day -day basis for the potential of short-term opportunity, but always wanting to close out before the end of the day until we see more weakness. Pretty much as long as gold and silver is in a daily uptrend, I would not be looking to swing trade bear miners. Oil pulling back. So we did get that daily lower high. We were looking for a lower high compared to 57.11. I was talking about how in the weekly equilibrium, that's 11 months in the making now, that if you were looking for a bear break, and a position for that bear break, the daily lower high is an area to be scouting for it. We lost the four hour uptrend, which indicated that the daily lower high had been set. So 57.43, 57.11, and now 56.86. And the key support is down at 52.95. So again, zooming out on the weekly time frame for oil, we are about $4.50 above support, and we're about $6 below resistance. So still very close to the middle of that range and patiently waiting. It could be another two, three, four weeks before we get a break. We've been anticipating sometime in September it's likely to happen. So we're patiently waiting. Natural gas bulls holding on pretty well. Daily inside bar on Friday. Four-hour uptrend still intact. The most important short-term support is 225. If we lose 225 early this coming week, we're going to be looking for daily consolidation to take place. And anything above 212 will be a daily higher low. So that's something to be keeping an eye on. Four hour uptrend is going to indicate when daily consolidation comes. And after 2306, the top of this move at this point, it's 2344 and then 250. And again, it's all about 250 for me personally. The weekly time frame, if we cannot break 250, it's a lower high. And then we look for that higher low. I know I keep repeating myself, but it's time to be paying attention to natural gas heading into the late fall, into the winter. And a weekly trend change for the first time since this massive 
very unusual spike back in 2018 is going to have us. Let's look bigger picture. So the monthly time frame, we're going to be looking for a bounce and a monthly lower high to form, but that monthly lower high could form after a, a 30% bounce or even more, obviously. So a lot of potential upside if we can change these trends and get some follow through from them. So that's where we stand into this coming week. Certainly still interested in gold and silver and miners. Watching for daily higher lows to be set on both gold and NUGT. But keeping in mind that weekly consolidation is probably not too far away from both silver and gold. Silver's definitely due for a little pullback. So keeping an eye out for short-term opportunity in the bear miners as well. Have a good rest of your weekend. Do good things out there. We'll end that off with some Iceland. I'll continue to put videos up throughout the weekend. It's a long weekend. No trading on Monday in Canada and the U.S. And we'll see you on Tuesday.